In this video, I want to talk to you about false couples. Let's start with something simple, such as the pelvis. So when we talk about false couples, we talk about opposing forces, and they don't have to be diametrically opposed. But we're talking about forces that differ in direction, magnitude, and timing. So if you look at the pelvis, for example, ordinarily we want this pelvis to remain somewhat neutral. So a neutral pelvis, if we are standing, would be where this pubic bone right here would be just slightly anterior to this ASIS. So something maybe like this picture right there. Now, how does this maintain its position? Well, in this situation, we have opposing muscles. So if you think about it, what we have spanning from here upward is the rectus abdominis. And they're gonna create a posterior tilt and then contract. So to oppose that, we have the hip flexor. So the iliopsoas comes through here, right? And what it does, it attaches right down onto the inner side of your thigh, and that creates the anterior tilt. So on the anterior surface, we have the rectus abdominis creating a posterior tilt, the flexor muscle creating an anterior tilt. We go to the posterior side of the pelvis, what we have is the rectus spinae that also work with the hip flexors to create an anterior tilt, and then the hamstrings that attach down here on the ischial tuberosities that create the posterior tilt. And so if we think about it, when you're standing, these opposing forces must be in balance in order to maintain a neutral pelvis. However, we walk, and in walking, we often need the pelvis to do what? To tilt anteriorly and posteriorly. In fact, pelvis bones will be working kind of reciprocally to each other, where as one goes forward, the other one falls back. So we need a coordinated pattern where during the anterior tilt, the erector spinae and hip flexors are pulling, while simultaneously, the rectus abdominis and the hamstring are relaxing. 